Isn't it a sticky mess? Does it grow facial hair? Doesn't it get all over your clothes and sheets? Do you ingest it? Do you put it in your eyes? Do you use castor packs? These questions and more answered today. Hi there and welcome to my channel, I'm Liz. And recently I put up a video on my personal experience, my personal testimony after using castor oil for 60 days. I had never used it before in my life in any form. I actually only just heard about it late in 2023 from Shay Whitney, who also has a fashion channel. So you never know who the messenger will be. <laughs> I am also a fashion channel mostly, but yeah, I saw she had made a video on it and I was just compelled to try it, did a little research on it and then had amazing results that I felt I needed to share. That video actually got a lot of views, so it seems like it is helping people and that was my intention. I'm really happy about that. I did want to mention I am not a doctor, not a skincare professional, just a 46 year old lady <laughs> sharing my journey with castor oil. So that during that video, I was a bit skeptical because I'm just skeptical in general. There's so many marketing ploys and social media and all the things. So I really need to see the proof in the pudding per se. And so now it has been a month later and I'm sold on the castor oil. So again, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below, check it out. Also check the the comments under that video, there's a lot of great testimony in there. I learned a lot and really it is people sharing their experience. They have no skin in the game, like no reason to not share. I think it really is people sharing to help others. In that video, I also didn't really like push the exact brand I was using because it was really just me sharing my experience and I think it's not really a brand. There are a few things to look out for. Even though that video got like over a million views, I think like a hundred people used my link and I made like 30 bucks <laughs> on the castor oil, but that doesn't matter. And I just wanted to get the word out and help people know about castor oil. But today, so that this video isn't super long, I am gonna just be going over the frequently asked questions I am going to divide it into these categories here. So some of them will kind of overlap and reference each other. So watch it all the way through. I'm going to try to be quick, but if you want me to go in depth with anything, maybe my current concoction, why I'm using it, the pajamas I use, the bedding I use and how that works with the castor oil, because it is something that I am going to use for the rest of my life. So let's get into the most asked questions. So what is castor oil? Castor oil is an oil extracted from the seed of the castor plant. And what makes it so special is it is rich in ricinoleic acid. This is a mono unsaturated fatty acid and it comprises about 90% of the oil, which gives the castor oil its remarkable properties. And a couple questions I got were of warning, what about the ricin? There's ricin in the castor plant in the seed. Isn't that toxic? Ricin is a highly toxic protein found in the castor plant from which the castor oil is derived. However, ricin is not present in the castor oil itself if it has been processed correctly. During the oil extraction process, ricin remains in the mashed castor beans, the castor meal, and does not become part of the oil. This separation is due to ricin's water solubility, whereas castor oil is extracted without involving water. This is important, something we talk about later, effectively preventing the toxin from contaminating the oil. So properly processed, castor oil is safe to use for a wide range of uses, including medicinal, cosmetic, and even food grade uses. Why are people so interested in using castor oil? I would say a lot of us are tired of pharmaceuticals, pharmaceutical things. One, they're expensive. A lot of times they're addictive and they have side effects. So I think finding something 
that can cure a lot of ailments in life. And especially as we're aging, I think people are kind of yearning for. And of course, this isn't something that's gonna be pushed because there's really no money in it. The castor oil is relatively affordable, is available everywhere, and it's not addictive. It is something that's been around for generations, for centuries even. And I think that kind of longevity gives it a lot of weight. And really with all the testimony, out recently why not give it a try is it a sticky mess uh it i would say it's not as sticky as like honey but it, it does have a thick consistency i will say you can cut it with something a bit more runny like a jojoba oil an argon oil even coconut oil even olive oil so an oil that you like just putting it, mixing it with that is something that you can do even some people mix it in with their moisturizer do you drink it do you only apply it or both personally i have only applied it topically i have never once consumed even a teaspoon in my life i do not put it in internally anywhere but i do use it all over do you use it only at night yes i have tried to use it in the day because i love it so much but because it is thicker and especially now in the cooler months this is when i'm starting to use it i am wearing sweaters wool coats cashmere sweaters and i don't really like the feeling so what you wear it with which is something we can get into is i think important in making sure that you can use it long term okay and these next few questions kind of go together do you apply it to your face how do you apply it and do you apply it after your skincare yes i apply it after my skincare and i do apply it to my face i actually just pour it into my hand i do not have a dropper on my bottle pour a little bit into my hand and i really just rub it on like a moisturizer all over my whole face and i didn't know this when i started doing it but have since learned it's basically a form of what they call slugging and it is a practice that a lot of the skincare people and makeup people use and basically it is a way to like lock in your skincare products and moisture so some people do this with vaseline i saw a dermatologist who actually uses the the butt paste for baby diapers until on her face and loves that so i was doing it with castor oil i love the moisturizing properties and i do feel that it actually is intensifying my skincare products but also making them more tolerable which we can get into later dealing with retin-a and things like that do you use castor oil packs yes kind of not regularly so i do apply it all over my body pretty much every night almost. I would say like 95 to 98% of the time. If I'm out of town, I actually did take it on vacation and applied it. I stayed in Airbnb, was just fine. I have stayed at family members' houses recently, applied it just fine. So I do do it mostly if you know I go out or something, I might skip that day. But I would say probably, let's say 97% of the time since November, I have applied it every single night. So what I did is just purchase some organic cotton baby washcloths, white. So I didn't want a color. I didn't want any chemicals in there. And I wanted something a little breathable. So the washcloths work great. I actually just kind of drizzle some on there and then pat it and then just stick it like on my liver is really where I do the castor oil packs. And I would say I don't do that regularly. So I don't really have an issue. So, so it's not something I'm like going for, but I would say if you have a specific ailment, Definitely, I would suggest from everything I've read and testimony I've read, I would say castor oil packs are very beneficial. So you can do the ones that stay in place. They actually, I think they have a Velcro. I'll link some down below. I'll also link below the washcloths that I purchased from Amazon because I don't mind it falling off. I think you just need to wear it for like an hour and then if you fall asleep, it falls off, that's fine. Okay, what brand do you use? So the brand that I use is this Rejuve Naturals. And I think it was probably suggested to me. It was the first bottle I bought. And I love it because this is the only one I've used and I had such great results. I don't have any allergic reaction to it. 
You may. So you have to listen to your own body. I mean, people can be allergic to anything. There's people allergic to the sun and even water. So it's not going to work for 100% of the people. I will say even in my other video, I think only out of the thousands of comments, I think only like three to five people maybe had an adverse reaction. So it certainly could happen, but really with everything that you use, you, sh you anything you use, anything you ingest, like you got to listen to your body. You got to listen to your body. So this is the brand that I use. And you don't have to use this particular brand. The things that I will say in my research that I have looked out for, and I don't fall into whatever everyone's saying, whatever's marketed, like I read and then I make an educated guess on my own. So you do want hexane free and it will be hexane free if it's cold pressed. If you have researched oils at all, cold pressed is the way when, when you heat up anything, it kind of kills a lot of the properties just in the heating process. So I learned that a long time ago in olive oil and coconut oil. So that is kind of something I always stick to in oils. I don't think that they should be heated. I think that that destroys a lot of the great properties in it. So that is something important to me. So those are almost synonymous. If it is cold pressed, it's gonna be hexane free. If it's hexane free, it was cold pressed because there's only two ways to extract it <laughs> from the seed, the oil. Another thing, the glass bottle. Now. I am a big fan of glass. I prefer glass. I moved to mostly glass things a long time ago, probably 15 or 20 years ago. So that is just something I do. I know nowadays they make a lot of food grade plastics. I am not naive enough to think that this was extracted and put in this right away. I'm sure it was put in a big plastic vat and then packaged this way for resale. So you kind of have to have some trust in the manufacturing process at some point. I mean, we, you never really know what's going on. So take that and do what you will. I, I don't think that the plastic's the worst if it's a food grade plastic. I personally prefer glass, but do your own research on that. And then as added benefit, I always do organic as well. I always try to buy organic. I have looked at the dark side of organic. And so I take that with a grain of salt as well. I just kind of feel it's an added benefit, but I have heard some farmers and things in those industries have their own take on that. So we can only do the best that we can in this manufacturing world. I would say at least cold pressed, be sure to get that. And then if you can do organic, go for that. And then glass, I would say would be the third most important thing. Okay, another question I got is what is the mix that you use? I will say in my first video, I was putting aloe in my concoction, but I had some chemists reach out and say, don't do that because aloe is water soluble, sol soluble and it's not as stable. So if you wanna use the aloe, put it on first and then the oil to lock it in. Do not put it in the concoction. It needs to be all oils to remain stable. Another thing I will say is you do need to use it pretty quick. So I am also gonna link some different sizes below some different size bottles because I think you should use it in 30 days. Um, if you deal with natural products, natural products, natural food, it goes bad fast. It does not, none of it lasts long. It, it, it just can't do that. So if you have an old bottle of castor oil and, and it smells weird, you should get rid of it. Like maybe you can use it maybe on your legs. I wouldn't use it on my face or neck or anything like that because I do think it can go bad. It can go rancid. So before we get into my concoction, I want, I actually saved a little bit of my last bottle. I am going to start writing the dates on my bottle when I open them because I did notice people were asking me, does it smell? And I'm like, no, it doesn't smell. But I had two bottles open, one upstairs, one downstairs. So I wasn't using it as fast. And I did notice that it did get a slightly rancid smell, like real slight. I wouldn't say it's bad. I, I'm still gonna use the rest of this, but I think that you need to use it up pretty quickly. Like I would say within 30 days. So this is a brand new bottle that I just opened yesterday and it 
it's always thick, but it does thicken up the older it is and the smell does change. So a new bottle, they also have a little plastic kind of gasket because air is also going to break this down faster air and sunlight. So you definitely want to, you know, keep this under your sink. I don't have windows that let in light in my bathroom, so I just leave it on my countertop, but you definitely want to make sure you have the lid on tight and don't expose it to sunlight and air. The new bottle has a real light kind of woodsy smell, I would say. And when it gets old, it's not bad, not like something rotten, but it's stronger. It's, it's different. It's not as light and it's just not as light, I would say. So I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's harmful, but just from knowing natural products and how they do go bad, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just kind of equate this to like when I buy produce at the grocery store, it will last like a week, sometimes two weeks. But if I buy it from farmer's market, it's like bad in three days. So <laughs> and even the stuff that I grow. So I know that like natural stuff doesn't last a long time. So definitely get a bottle that you are gonna use, I would say within 30 days. Okay, what is the mix you use? So this is actually an old soap bottle that I cleaned out that I had and I really love it. You can see that it's more runny too. So this is easier to apply. I'll link some of these below as well, similar to this. The top is plastic, so the, the tube going through there is plastic. So if you don't want that, you can just get a screw on lid like the bottle and pour it into your hand. And again, if you want to see how I apply that, leave that in the comments below. Let me show you my current concoction. So I use these baskets to organize my items. So this is my basket of oils and I keep this under my sink so that I can pull it out to refill my concoction, which I am doing once a month now. So I had to stop using the aloe in the concoction, but I am currently using rosehip oil, jojoba oil. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that. Uh, I don't put the aloe vera gel in there, but I do apply it sometimes. I don't use it all the time because now it's an extra step, but I do have that, I do use it. And the new items I added, oh, argan oil, did I already say that? And I do do, argan oil. I used to put vitamin E, but I heard that argan oil is rich in vitamin E, so I don't need to double up on that. And then this is just a little bottle of it as well. So my newest things I added is frankincense oil, sandalwood oil, and myrrh. So I heard really great things about those, and we can go through and talk more about why I chose them, of course, I'll link everything below. And that is the current concoction. Unless I have a reason to change, this is my concoction that I am currently using. I also picked up these little funnels, which are great to easily get the castor oil into the bottle, nice and neat. How does it feel on? I love it. <laughs> I'm like used to it now. I've been using it a few months and I would say at first it was pretty sticky, but I'm used to the feeling now. I actually enjoy it and look forward to it. It's like just a extra moisturizing event. And I mean, as I'm aging, I really enjoy that. Now I have used it, I'm, I'm using it during the winter. So we will see what the summer months bring and how that goes, I don't know, but I really like it. And yeah, I put it all over my, I put the castor oil straight on my face and neck. So no concoction on that, but I do use skincare underneath. And then the concoction I put everywhere else. Has the concoction brought added benefits? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Just from my research of these oils, it should. Aside from the benefits that I've already had, I haven't, I haven't noticed anything else yet, but it has also only been 30 days. So we will see. What color is the oil? So the oil is, is a real light yellow. I guess like a clean oil would be. Not as dark, not like olive oil. Olive oil is a little more golden. And then of course, avocado oil is light green and coconut oil is clear. I would say this is a very pale yellow and maybe it comes in other colors, but that kind of makes sense and that's what I've seen. Do you use regular castor oil or the Jamaican black castor oil? 
I actually hadn't even heard of the Jamaican black castor oil until people commented in my comment section. So then I looked into it and for reasons that I stated in the beginning, I am not a fan of heating any heating in the whole extraction process and the black castor beans are heated and then they also have to use water in the process and in my research not adding water keeps the ricin out so for me i am not going to use it for those two reasons but that is based on the knowledge that I currently have. You do your own research and do what is best for you. For me, I just use the regular castor oil. Do you use it on your hair? Uh, no, I have not. I currently do a coconut oil hair mask at least once a month, sometimes twice. I really should do it weekly, but I don't. And I've done that for quite some time in trying to repair my hair and I really like it. So that is what I use. Also the coconut oil I had heard at one point is the only oil that can penetrate the hair shaft. So I really like it. I like the smell of it. I don't really need to grow hair. So I think that if you maybe have like the hair thinning or something like that, I have heard that it helps with that. I'm not against using it. I'll probably try it, maybe incorporate it once a month, but I have not done so personally myself yet. Does it get in your hair and make it all greasy? No. <laughs> so I do put it all over my face. I even put it on my ears and like behind like all this skin because that ages and I want to have that moisturized and have any help there that I can as well. I usually put my hair up when I go to sleep. I put it all on my face, neck, ears, all that area. And in the morning, no, I don't have an issue with greasy hair. I don't have it. I don't put so much that's like running back into my hair. So I, I don't have that issue. Do you find that it clogs your pores? Not at all. I probably quite the opposite. I've had less skin ailments on my face since using it. And that's why I do not want to rock the boat. That is why I just use the castor oil and not any of the other items on my face. I have had zero allergic reactions, only wonderful improvements. So I'm going to keep doing that. Plus I do use it as a last step in my skincare regimen. So I feel that locks all of that in. So I don't, I don't have any issues with it at all. And it does have anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties. So I think it's great to use on your face area. Of course, if you have a reaction to it, I'm actually allergic to tea tree oil. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> so anyone can be allergic to anything. You have to listen to your body and do what's best for you. Does it grow face hair? This is a question I got a ton and and I have seen some ladies say yes. For me, no. I have even had some of the ladies comment in my comment section on the last video that it helped grow their eyebrows. Not, not these, not these overplucked 90s eyebrows. <laughs> they have not grown at all, like anywhere. I actually hardly ever have to pluck my eyebrows, maybe once every three months. My eyebrow hair just doesn't grow. I overplucked in the 90s like a lot of us did and the pores, the follicles are dead. So I don't grow hair there. Where I did have the hair growth is in the eyelashes and it's great. I love it. Like they are so much, they're literally twi at least twice as big as they used to be. Uh, I have more, I love it. And as far as like peach fuzz or facial hair everywhere else, I'm actually not a face shaver. I, I've never shaved my face. I know a lot of ladies do that for makeup purposes or like exfoliating. I'm not against it. I hear lots of great things about it. I just personally don't do that. I haven't ever done that. And I, I don't have like, I don't have like more hair growing any anywhere that it's not supposed to be. So I've only had hair growth on my eye lashes. And again, I put it on my entire face almost every single day for the last few months. How do you use it in your routine? I think I touched on this, but I use it as a last step to lock everything in. And I do go to sleep with it on my face, on everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I sleep that way. How do you use it for detoxing? I do not ingest it. I have heard benefits of doing that. I myself have never ingested it at all, not even a teaspoon. Again, I do put it all over my body, 
on you know my skin and your skin is your largest organ and anything you put that much that often is gonna sink into your bloodstream and things. So I do think I get a benefit in that way. I think maybe if you don't use it quite as often or you use it a little lighter, a little more sparingly. So do your research on that. That is not something I personally do. I have only applied it topically and I do do that everywhere. And again, almost every single night and I have had really good results with that. So I do not ingest it, have not ingested it. I'm not against it. I just personally haven't felt the need, so I haven't done that. Does it improve your sleep? Yes, I think so. Exactly what I can't pinpoint. So there's a few, I guess, ideas that I have that could it could be. One is anti-inflammatory. So any like soreness or discomfort, I think it's gonna kind of relieve that, which is relaxing. When you have a pain, you tense up, you stress up, and that causes other issues, I think. So I think that maybe it's relaxing in some way. Also, since I do do it almost every single night, I think that has kind of become a bedtime regimen, which I already had a pretty good bedtime regimen, but I, I mean, this really upped it. It definitely is a relaxing process. It's something I look forward to. And then when you do something the same every single night, your body kind of knows, okay, we're like getting ready for sleep time. So I think kind of all these things together help aid in sleep. So I would say if you have trouble sleeping, certainly try using it regularly. How, how, how do you use it to improve your eyesight? So if you watched my initial video, I believe that it has improved my night vision. Again, I am 46. Of course, my eyesight is just naturally going to get worse and I have seen improvement, which is really weird. And so, I personally have not put it in my eyeball. I do put it and concentrate getting it around my eye area really, really well. It is an oil, so it is gonna move a little bit. So I'm sure some probably seeps in there, but I have not purposely put drops in my eye. I will link a video I recently watched from a, an eye doctor. And again, I was reading his comments. There was a gentleman in the comment section who said he puts just one drop in each eye once a day for three days and he's been doing that like 10 or 20 years and he said he was 80 and he had no eye issues so that was quite a testament i personally have not put it in my eyes uh, you have to do your own research i heard that it can you know be irritating or itchy but that should dissipate if I had a, a severe eye issue, I would absolutely do it. I think it's better than the alternatives out there and why not give it a try? But again, you have to do what's best for you, what you feel and you know, do your own research. But I do not put it in my eyes. I just put it on. And again, I think that some probably gets in there. I don't like purposely try to get it in there, but it has helped me and so I'm not, exactly sure how that works. <laughs> all right, hopefully I got all the questions. If I missed any, let me know. I could do a part two. If you wanna know how I apply it, see my concoction, see anything else that I should expand on that you you know, would wanna know about, then let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to you know, help in any way that I can, get more information out there. If you're enjoying this video, please be sure to give it a like, share it with a family member who you think may benefit from this. I really think that it's kind of all up to us to get the word out. This isn't something that's gonna be widely studied in, in meaningful tests. I think that's why a lot of the doctors are reluctant because they do rely on studies and several studies and mass studies and there's no money in, in pushing castor oil for any kind of pharmaceutical company or medical field because it's not addictive and it's not <laughs> something that can be altered in a way to charge hundreds of dollars or anything. So I am glad that it's actually kind of caught a blaze on social media because I think it's helping a lot of people. Uh, certainly helped me and I am happy to incorporate a natural Thing into my everyday regimen. So hopefully I answered all the questions. If I missed anything, if you want more information on anything, if there's anything you did or didn't like about this video, let me know. I am newer to YouTube. I haven't even been on here a year yet. I'm getting close to my one year anniversary, but I'm new. I'm still learning. Just me sharing my 
two cents out here on the YouTube. So I wanted to thank you so much for stopping in and spending some of your time with me. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you have a really great day and I hope to see you in the next one.